Hello, everyone. This is Rev. Kimmy. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm Dr. G. And this is Season 1, Episode 4, Conversations with Kimmy and Lee. And today, we are going to do something really different, aren't we, Kimmy? Yes, Dr. G. We have quite a surprise in store for our listeners today. We're going to do something completely different and off the cuff. Yeah. A free-flowing exchange of our personal experiences with God and miracles. So, yes, and we're enjoying the journey. Yeah, yeah. So we're sitting here with our favorite coffees and creamers, and we, we got our little scented candle going. And we're going to share with you today uh, some experiences from our our walk our walks with God, and it's, I think you'll find it quite interesting. Some of you will will be able to listen to my story and say, oh, that was me as a child, and others are going to listen to Kim's story, and you're going to recognize that in your life. Our paths to where we are today were so different, weren't they? Yes. <clears throat> I don't know if anyone knows... The author, John Newton, he wrote the most famous hymn, Amazing Grace. And to me, his song is my song, the song of our hearts concerning the Lord. And if you listen to the words of Amazing Grace, I'll just read a little bit. And then after my testimony, I'll continue on with that hymn. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. You guys will hear some of my testimony of why it is I'm getting a little teary and how grateful I am to the Lord. You know, the Bible says that people who... There was this lady in the Bible, Mary. She washed the Lord's feet with perfume and with her hair. Mm -hmm. And the religious people said, oh, do you know who she is? She was what one one would call a a loose lady, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, the Lord said that for those who are forgiven much, love much. And not, you know, it's not like I'm some murderer or whatever, but I was lost. And Jesus found me. I was looking for God in all of the wrong places. But he saved me. He made a way out to where I found him. And you're going to hear about that. At least parts of it. It's going to be in my Quest for God series. It's a a book coming out. I have a publisher. And it's soon going to be released. And people will be able to order it on Amazon. Get it at Barnes & Noble. And on my website, whenever my publisher puts that up for everyone to order the book. So let me just share with regards to how did this all start? Well, I'm a Jew. I was raised a Jew. Or should I say a mutt? Uh, My mom was Christian. My dad was Jewish. But nobody's really a practicing Christian or a practicing Jew. There's no Torah read. There's no not going to temple, and we're not going to church. I've never gone to church in my life. I've never spoken to a pastor. I have no clue what Jesus has done for me. So I at Christmas times, we would do Hanukkah and Christmas. <laughs> sure. We would do both. So I call myself a mutt with my dry humor. I just want to say that my personality type, I don't know if you guys have ever done that through Myers-Briggs, that is spun off of the foundation of psychologist Carl Jung, J-U-N-G. Okay, he's well known. Based on his work, Myers-Briggs created this personality test. Now, I've taken it many times, and it all comes up the same, which is an INTJ. It's supposed to be the rarest personality type for the female. In fact, they call it, if you meet a female INTJ, you've met a unicorn. (laughs) Have you met a unicorn, Dr. G? Oh, yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> Have I poked you with that with that horn? <laughs> okay. So, um, but the reason why I'm bringing up my personality type, guys, is it's known. You can Google it and see. The INTJ out of 16 personality types that are out there, do you know that we're the least likely to believe in God? We're skeptics. And we don't really believe things unless we've seen them. And I'm really still that way. I still look for my evidence. So when I was a little girl, I really was a Nancy Drew. I've always been curious, investigate, and what's the truth. And, you know, I've just always been that way. In fact, that was the first um, book series my mom gave me, Nancy Drew, among other books. So my life then was... I remember around 10, 7, I'm given a Star of David to wear. So this is my God, whoever he is. I didn't know, right? I'm not reading the Bible. I'm not reading the Torah. I'm not going to church. I'm not going to temple, nothing. Which is not, you know, I'm not trying to put my parents down. They may have been raised the same way, right? I don't know. But we all need to take responsibility for our own beliefs, and so, um, later on in my early 20s, I started my quest for God, taking my responsibility and learning. But in the meantime, when I was little, I would make up stories. I always loved the Jewish God. I made up stories with my, you know, singing songs, you know, when I was alone, because I'm introverted. So I entertained, <laughs> self-entertain, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. being alone and you're out on the swings and you're, you know, you're out there alone and you're singing to God. I've just really liked God, you know, really into him. And so um, years go by, or actually when I was little, we would actually pray around the table and I would say, God is good. God is great. Let us thank him for our food. Amen. And that's all I knew of him. <laughs> right? Other than my pretending and singing. So, um, my life later on in my early 20s, honestly, those prayers around the table, God was forgotten. Those prayers ended. At some point, they just stopped. Hmm. And so here I am now. Let's fast forward. I'm in my early 20s. I'm a law firm manager of a three-location law firm. I'm a paralegal to the managing partner. Trial, handling all the trials. I'm handling all the interpreters for, you know, the court reporters, the trial subpoenas, I'm overseeing all the trials, you know, and I'm hiring investigators, and you got to do sub rosa on this person, and, you know, that sub rosa is Latin for under the rose, which means I'm hiring an investigator to go investigate someone who's pretending to be injured who really is not on a personal injury case. So we represented uh, insurance. We did insurance defense. So we're representing State Farm and you know, stuff like that at so the insurance companies. So, you know, my life is very busy. <coughs> I'm doing all these things. I'm married. I have a new child. And, you know, I have someone who's who's uh, a maid to come and clean my house. And she does my laundry. And she does my yard work. I had it. This is we're on our second brand new home. Pretty good for, you know, early 20s. I had a brand new Acura Legend. Unfortunately, before this baby that I'm talking about, my young daughter, I had a miscarriage in my first pregnancy, um, which devastated me. And I wanted to always remember that baby. So I bought a Rolex watch. At, I think I was 20 years old. And so my point is, you know, when I'm running the law firm, I was very a very straight laced person, didn't have a parking ticket, no speeding tickets. In fact, I don't even recall having an adult cavity. Okay? If one looked at me, in which people probably thought I was perfect, pretty much a perfect person. In fact, I even thought I was pretty much a perfect person, which is hilarious today because later on I find out I wasn't. <laughs> I'm a sinner. So,
So, I have this life that's super busy, right? My downtime is with my daughter because I have other people. I'm delegating the cleaning to the maid and gardening and, you know, to the gardener. And so I can spend my time with my daughter Mm -hmm. and her, her gymnastics, her ballet, what have you, swimming. And so I had a normal life. I mean, I remember <clears throat> at the law firm, I, I was so nerdy that I would ask the managing partner, can I buy a couple of stamps from you? So one would think, if you looked at me, my car was like really clean and the yard and everything about me and honest. And so a person actually would probably think she's pretty much a perfect person. But I wasn't, like I was saying, I found out later I'm a sinner and I, you know, pretty much a wretched person I had no idea because it really only takes one sin which let's say is a lie we've all lied at least once right so I find out later I'm not perfect but honest honest testimony here I thought I was okay so which I find hilarious today so as I'm having this alleged perfect life I'm empty 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 inside have you ever felt empty, Dr. G? Oh, yeah. Oh, you have? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I, though, tried to fill the void, honestly, guys, with shopping. Okay, I'd buy this painting. I'd buy my Rolex. I had a beautiful, almost flawless ring. My ex-husband was a gemologist, so he bought a very nice one. I mean, I can make a list of how I had it pretty good for early 20s, right? I'm the boss at the law firm. I'm hiring, firing. I'm handling the finances. My, the bosses, the managing partner, the partners trusted me that I was a one signator on the checking accounts, okay? Just my signature. I was trusted, but I was empty. So you're telling us money can't buy happiness? Well, sure it can. <laughs> Let's get into Dr. G's wallet, shall we? <laughs> Look over there and then, you know, do the red herring and let's go grab his wallet, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, no, it couldn't back then. Maybe now. <laughs> but no. <clears throat> it, no, it could not. Um, so I went on. Um, I remember my my ex-husband and I. When we were married, he had a networking group. So we went to a restaurant and they gave entertainment. You could sit down for 10 minutes for free with a psychic. I've never sat down with a psychic before, a medium, nothing, anything like that, fortune, anything except for maybe fortune cookies. <laughs> Have you? Did you ever sit down with a medium before, years ago? No, back in junior high, uh, you know, this is early 70s, we would experiment with uh, seances. There's a thing we are laid, <coughs> laid down and they put your fingers under, under the you other You did this person. with your friends? Yeah, and <laughs> you'd raise up the dead body. Oh, did you? And, a and dead body? You found well, a dead body? No, you'd, you'd talk about <laughs> you mean dead weight? the person had died in this tragic accident and you're all going to raise him. Wait, so you kids were sitting around pretending to be dead and doing this? Yeah, and uh, oh. <laughs> the funny thing is, it was uh, actually up on the top floor of the Sunday school on a Wednesday uh, after confirmation class that we would do this. And, uh, you know, growing up, and then you'd see uh, go, uh, different parties and stuff and play with Ouija boards. And, and I can tell you right now, a Ouija board is not a game. There's definitely something not to play with. Um, there's stuff like that, and you'd, you'd hear other kids talking about white magic, you know, not black magic, or we're, we're just doing white magic. And So you guys um, were just being curious, like I did to my mom's book, about what was the name of the book with the... Um, with the murders in it. Oh, Helter Skelter. Yeah, Helter Skelter. I found that like when I was 10, yeah. my mom's book, you know, in her little den yeah. of all her books. I found that and there's like real pictures in there. Yeah, we well, we never 
never really dabbled in... You, you weren't nosy and curious? And well, probably to the extent that... I guess any, that was your feeding your curiosity back then, huh? I'd, you know, I tried it once, like with the candle, do a little seance, everybody sits around a circle and try to call in a dead spirit. And, of course, we were never successful. A <laughs> dead spirit. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't suppose there's a life. What's spirit What's the one board that you guys push around and you pretend like yes, no? Yeah, that's the Ouija board. Okay, my yeah. sister and I found one of those once, and I was pushing it. I yeah, remember they sell pushing it. As a game. <laughs> yeah, and we're like ah, but I'm in my head. I'm like, but I pushed it to yes. <laughs> uh. But you know, the truth is, is that they're really yet yeah, us just kids are playing around. But the truth is, there really is heaven and hell, and there really are demons. And good angels, which, you know, we're going to talk about things like that. I've had angel experiences. I've seen heaven and hell. Um, and like I said, the INTJ, God knows what he's dealing with. You know, quite frankly, I'm not going to believe unless you show me. And he showed me, and it really scared me. As my aunt would call it, it scared the P-Watt out of me. <laughs> But so let's go back to my story with regards to sitting down. Now I'm at the networking group, my ex-husband's, right? Right. With the and, yeah. Right. And, and we have entertainment, 10 never, minutes for free. And it's like, we all like free things. Medium, the crystal ball, and the tarot cards. No, no, no. None no. of that, no. No, what did she do? She was just sitting there. I remember she did a little numerology on getting my date of birth. And she said it totaled Christ. Christ number 13 or something like that. And so anyway, so I'm sitting down for 10 minutes for free, and, and, you know, here we are, the Curious George, you know. I got curious, like, wow, she's talking about my giftings and my talent and what my purpose is. It's like, wow, I didn't think about my purpose, really. You know, like I was thrown into judicial law. That fell on my lap years prior. And then you get stuck doing it, right? You're stuck in it. And so here I was. She's she's starting to stir things about with me. So then her I remember her name today. Her name is Rita. And so I followed up with her later on and had appointments. And it really, really stirred things about. And I started my quest for God. Who's God? And how do you get rid of sin? So... I saw on TV, so I was doing like angel things. I was doing Reiki. I was going, you know, psychics here and there. Reiki, what's that? Reiki is like the, uh, it's Eastern, old, ancient healing from the universe, universal energy. You lay your hands on, you're initiated, and you have this, 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 uh, universal energy to help people heal or balance their energy in their body, etc. But, Remember, I'm on an investigation, personal investigation. Yeah. Who's God and how do you get rid of sin? So as I am moving along and trying to find God, I'm seeing that, okay, these psychics are wrong about this and this and this and this. This doesn't seem to be the truth or reliable. So then I eventually leave that. So then I'm with that Reiki stuff. And I'm not really seeing people getting healed. So I'm like, this can't be right. So I call this my, my quest for God. That it was my um, Goldilocks experience. You know how in the story, the children's story, <clears throat> she goes around trying all these beds. One's too hard, one's too soft, and the porridge is too hot, and it's too cold. In other words, it's not a right fit. This is not right. That was me hunting go through going through the gurus from a to z i explored it every type of well almost all the type of religions i never thought about going to a christian church nor getting a bible or anything to do with the real jesus because in the new age stuff i was involved in there was a jesus they would talk about but that wasn't the jesus that's mentioned in the bible and i knew nothing about the real jesus and what he had done for me so, as I am exploring, like I said, I, I didn't find these things to be solid. Nor were they filling my void that I was talking about, that I was trying to fill. 
the shopping couldn't do or my Rolex couldn't do. Or the title, the manager, the boss, hiring, firing, handling all the money, the trials, the da-da-da. It, nothing could fill this void. So, what did this void, this emptiness, feel like? <laughs> emptiness. <laughs> I fell in the middle of my chest an emptiness. I don't know how to explain it. I could only explain what it felt when that emptiness was filled, which everyone will learn about here soon. Okay. So as I'm proceeding on with my quest for God and I'm on an investigation that occurred, I don't know how many years, guys. I'd have to really think about it. But let's just say about six years, five years. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to really think about it, okay? So... um. So I'm progressing into my investigation, and I see on TV James Van Prague, who at the time was the best psychic, most well-known in the United States. And so he, had, he was on TV shows. He was on, he had books out. And I remember on TV, he had this ad about uh, intuition group, you know, to develop your own skills of intuition, whatever it is, clairvoyant or, you know. Some and, and I saw him as a medium talking to the you know the dead, and he's helping the loved ones to heal or to feel better. And I'm like, how sweet is that? I want to develop my skills, whatever they are. Well, I never developed the skill of mediumship. I never talked to someone who's dead, but I did develop my skills as in, in, in what people call intuition. So. After we're done with his class, and I graduate, and allegedly his best student, and so my friends and I from that class were gathered at our home here in Santa Clarita, California, and we were in a development group, and as we're reading each other, my friend said to me, Kim, you belong to Jesus. You're going to, he said, you're going to be, let's see if I can remember everything he said. This was 26 years ago. Okay. Because my baby who's getting married tomorrow is 26 and she was only a few months old at the time. So I would say approximately 26 years ago. So I have to remember what he said. He said, you, you, you belong to Jesus and you're going to do what he did. You're going to make disciples. You are going to be able to answer any question. People will come to you and you will be able to answer any question. Well, I find out later, guys, that's the prophetic. And that's true. A lot of people come to me for answers and I give the answer, right? Like I'm missing person cases or etc. cetera. Um, he was right about that. He said, I'm going to wear black all the time and I don't know why. I did for years. Most of the time at court, you know, in judicial law, we do wear black. So who knows um, let's see. He said I would have to be put away because of what I do. Guys, I am put away. Nobody knows where I live except for the police. Okay? So that these things came to pass. They also said I would marry someone who's in entertainment. And I don't know if you guys know, Dr. G and I are married. He is in the entertainment. Yeah. So you could go watch his series. <laughs> I'll do a little ad yeah, for a minute. Yeah. Uh, TV series that was on Oxygen Channel. Um, it's now on Prime Video. It's called A Smiley Face Killer's a Hunt, The Hunt for Justice. Yeah. And so if you are a true crime junkie, that's the series for you. Um, so anyway, so then we're doing this development group and he's saying all these things. So I'm like, I believed him. Do you know, guys, he's not even a believer still today. I'm friends with him. He's a Buddhist. So, you know, God can reveal information to anyone, right? So he the can, guy who told you you belong to Jesus was a Buddhist. Yeah, he's still a Buddhist today. Okay. I asked him recently, are, do you remember saying all this? He said, yeah. I said, do you know that all that's come to pass? I'm doing these things now. You know, I've been in ministry over 20 years since 1998 when I got saved. I mean, like the prophetic came right away. 
Yeah, I'm, and people can laugh at me, what I'm about to say. But you don't understand, I was given when I was saved this gift of pro prophecy that I did not understand at the time. It was like I was given this killer, this amazing jet, you know, fighter jet, and have all these buttons that can do this and this and this. And I didn't know how to fly that plane. And that's the only way I can describe how I felt about my gifts. I had no idea how to fly it with all these tricks and gifts and seeing and knowing things. What the world is wrong with me? <laughs> so, you know, honestly, here's the thing, guys, that you can laugh at me about. It was very confusing. I saw and knew that Princess Diana would die and that Mother Teresa would die. And when it came to pass, just a few days later or whatever it was, do you know I ran to my pastor and I said, did I kill them? <laughs> I know, it's funny. Go ahead, laugh. It's okay to laugh at me. I, I mean, it's funny that I also thought I was perfect. Remember, you guys can laugh at that. This is about a true testimony, and I don't really care if I'm thrown under the bus to highlight God and the truth, okay? Sure, I'm really, not scared to be real here and to be transparent. Yeah. That's who I am. Revelation if anyone knows about me. The death of Princess yes, Diana I did. And yes, and then Tracy, when it occurred. Those your first ones? Yeah, how many days apart did those two die? You oh, guys got to Google okay. it. I forget. It's a few days apart. And when it occurred, that freaked me out because I was saved, you know what, right before that. And so I ran to my pastor who at the time, well, he's, he's dead now, but he's, they're famous. These are famous guys on TV, whatever. I won't say names, but he met with me, God bless him. And so humble and nice. And he said, Kim, that's just what, you know, you didn't kill them. <laughs> he's like, no, no, this is the great gift of prophecy. This is just what, you know, <laughs> and that was like a relief. I didn't kill Princess Diana or Mother Teresa. <laughs> so, um, but it took a long time for me to get used to these gifts and why I'm seeing this and why I know this. And, you know, I had to learn how to fly the plane, so to speak. So, um, so, uh, remember my, this Buddhist told me to go get a, he told me to go get, and one of the other things he said, go, go get a Bible. You belong to Jesus. So I did. I, left his house that night, went to Barnes and Noble, and I purchased a Bible right away before I even went home. Then I ran home, and I, lie, I was lying in bed and reading my book. Now, with a book, you start left to right, right, Dr. G? Yeah. But not with the Bible. Guys, don't do that. You start in the book of John if you are a new believer. Okay, so at that point, I'm not even a believer. And I'm lying in bed, and I'm looking at the um i oh you found the dates of when they died princess yeah. diana died august 31st 1997 oh then i was saved it was late 97 i thought it was early 1998 and then so mother, yeah mother teresa died 5 days later oh my goodness yeah well you know what that also helps me remember cuz i i didn't remember if i was saved at the tail end of 97 or early 98 now we know Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd have to look at my records. I didn't realize they died so closely together. Yeah, just a few days apart. And it really freaked me out. So I'm lying in bed reading this Bible that I know nothing about. Never gone to church, never talked to a pastor. And you point. started in the book of Genesis. Yes, I did. I absolutely not the place to start. And my true <laughs> testimony, I know. And my true testimony is... I was rolling my eyes, guys. Adam and Eve making the woman from the man's rib. How ridiculous is this? This is stupid. Really? Okay. But as I'm reading this and not believing in this, the spirit comes on me from on high and fills me with like love and it comes down into my spiritual heart you know where you love people you love your dog or you love whomever that's the called your spiritual heart and this spirit just came into mine and into my heart 
and I was filled with this presence of overwhelming love. And I finally now was filled. This void inside of me was filled. It was love I was looking for that my husband couldn't give me being a mom to my daughter or the job or the Rolex or the, you know, nothing could fill it but the presence of God from the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit also, well, at the time I had no idea what this presence was because I was goofed up and new age stuff and I had no idea. I mean, it could have been an alien for all I knew, right? (laughs) Not knowing the truth of the Bible yet, that it was the Holy Spirit and that he convicts us of truth and of our sin, okay? And he was convicting me that I was a sinner that I was this wretched that I read earlier, right? With amazing, amazing grace. This perfect person, what? I'm not perfect? No, apparently not. <laughs> I was being convicted by God. Did you know you were not? I was a sinner, wretched. And like I said, it just takes one sin, apparently, to qualify. Yep. And so... The Spirit was also convicting me that Jesus died for me, and I believed. Then he was convicting me to go to church and get baptized. And I was at at another point, a few minutes later, standing up, got out of bed, standing up in my bedroom alone, with no music on. I was raising my arms to heaven, which I've never witnessed. I've never gone to church. Nor did I see it on TV. I was raising my hands to the heavens. And all of a sudden I started speaking in what people call tongues of angels. And I was saying, And just praising God. And I didn't know what I was doing. I called my friend at the time. Her name was Danny. She's a PR person who started... The famous Tony Robbins. Okay. Okay, she's well connected. I remember calling her and saying, I just had this experience reading the Bible and the Spirit is convicting me to go get baptized. Now, if you guys, that, that lines up with God's word. After you believe, you come to believe, it says in the Bible, now go get baptized. I didn't know that, but that's what the Holy Spirit was doing with me. So then Danny says to me, she goes, I go, where do I go? Because remember, I have never gone to church. So she says, go to church on the way and have John. um, Oh, goodness. What is his name? Oh, no. The one who's in charge of uh, church on the way. Um, I can't remember right now. But he's on TV. He's a TV evangelist. And this big, what's his name? Uh, I can't think of it. But anyway. No, not, not, uh uh-uh. So then I'm like, oh, my goodness. So then I call the church, and, of course, he's not going to, the lead pastor on TV is not going to be baptizing me. And so uh, somebody else did. And um, so my life changed from there, and every day, every day since, I've been administering this prophetic, this prophetic gift has been leading me, and God has been using me, and it's been quite interesting. So do you have any stories that you want to share, Dr. G? Yeah, uh, as we said be, before starting out, the, you can, if one were to compare our stories, they are dramatically different. You grew up in a home where there was religion, but there wasn't really the practice of it except for holidays. Can I interject for a minute? You guys, I just Googled it. It was Pastor Jack Hayford. There we go. <laughs> yeah, she's like, go and have Pastor Jack Hayford baptize you. I'm like, okay. You know, because I don't know who he is. I, uh, He's written so many books, guys, and on TV all the time. It's like Billy Graham yeah, going to be yeah. baptizing you. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of so, funny. My story is quite a bit different. I grew up in a home, uh, both from my mom's side and my dad's side. I think my mom was Presbyterian and Methodist background or something like that. 
And my dad's background, of course, uh, came from the old Norwegian Evangelical Lutheran Church, the old missionaries coming from Norway. And so I was raised Lutheran, I baptized as a baby in the Lutheran Church in Albert Lee, Minnesota, you know. Well, so you and I were raised completely different with this religious yeah. background. However, one thing we have in common, we're both blue eyes and we were blonde hair. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it. That's about <laughs> it. And so I, I grew up going to Sunday school and uh, going to church services and doing the liturgy and, and learning all that. And, and I thought I was a pretty good boy. You know, <laughs> that's what, what so I was So you were learning. perfect like me? <laughs> well, I, I thought I was. I thought I was doing pretty well. I tried to obey my parents and, and not ruffle anybody's feathers at school. You Wait know? a minute. So you didn't argue with your parents when they told you to go wash the dishes? Did they ever tell you to wash the dishes or make oh, your yes. bed? Oh, yes. Oh, uh, yes. From very early on, uh, my brother and I were changing our younger baby's brothers you know when i was eight years old I you're was dodging changing, the question dr g let's get the to the heart and, of this and uh, i don't recall you arguing. didn't have to do the dishes oh yes did the dishes you didn't never tell your parents no no in fact i remember <laughs> negotiating with my mom it was uh, she, well i think that's a no no, she gave me the option of either you think washing, we the diapers, Dr. G? washing the diapers or changing the baby's diapers. And, <laughs> and at first I said, I'll wash the diapers, and, and, and I put it off. And, and uh, It sounds like getting, you were naughty. Getting sidetracked. But, I was uh, better. First time I opened that diaper <laughs> pail, I had to renegotiate that deal. But no, I don't remember ever... Um, Really being terribly disobedient. No, I wasn't either, but I'm having you know, fun. But the, and the church taught me that, uh, you know, I was going to church, I was uh, praying to God, and we prayed before every meal, uh, religiously. Do you I remember what you prayed? Was it like mine? Um, I learned that prayer over at a friend's house, but no. Really? So that was just around gr everywhere? Growing huh? up, we used to just say, uh, you know, thank you, thank you, Lord, for our food, and, you know, it was very free for all. Yeah, growing up in the, my dad's dad spoke Norwegian. His mom spoke Danish. So he, you know, learned up, grew up mm. praying in a little bit of Norwegian too, and learning different phrases. So were they and, kind of strict? Yeah, they were pretty strict, pretty strict. Especially my mom's side, because that was the German side and very regimented. And but uh, the point is, I thought I was a good boy. I thought I was a good boy. And in the summer of 1971, which was after seventh grade and before my 12th birthday, I went to a, a Lutheran Bible camp. And that's the one that you and I went to last year. And folks can go to my Facebook page and go all the way back to last, uh, just last July in 21. And we went over there, and I showed you the exact spot where I accepted Christ as my Savior, and you videotaped it for me. That was my 50th anniversary. It was very moving for me. And uh, that, that night, uh, we were in the chapel there at Green Lake Bible Camp in Spicer, Minnesota. And the old Lutheran pastor, a Norwegian Lutheran pastor, was... He said something that I had never heard before. And, you know, I, I, I'd i heard a lot of scripture growing up in the church and going to Sunday school, but I, I'd never heard, heard anybody say that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. And for the wages of sin are death. 623. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. And, and like, like you were talking about, I suddenly realized this incredible hollowness. And that I was so full of sin that I wasn't a good boy. 
And no matter what I did, and going to church, and praying, and, and going on Christmas, you know, Christmas Eve service, and, and Easter service, and all that, and eventually going through confirmation that none of that mattered. So you did you come to that a realization yourself that works couldn't save you, your own works, you needed Jesus' works? Not by works? works of righteousness, yes. And I walked outside, he did an altar call, which, you know, was a little bizarre. You don't do that in Lutheran church. And uh, I was like in the third row. And I passed it up, but I went outside, and I was really into astronomy. Back Why did you days. pass it up? Uh, well, because uh, I'm very introverted. I, I, <laughs> That's, and I'm going to... Uh, Dr. G and I have the same personality type. Yeah. INTJ. I, um, We're introverted people. <laughs> years and years later, uh, when I first got to St. Cloud teaching, uh, one of the my colleagues uh, gave me the Myers-Briggs. And I came up an INTJ. And oh. I said, well, that's interesting. I, I just kind of blew it off. And, <laughs> and then when I, I met you, you asked me to do it, and I came up INTJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ask everyone to do it. I'm like, have you done the personality test? And <laughs> anybody who knows me from high school, I mean, I, I, would, I was much happier. Just let me go sit in the back of the physics room and read my book, read, you know, Einstein's book or something. And It's not a surprise you grew up to be a professor. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was a science You geek. sound like one. I was a science <laughs> geek in high school. I got the Bosch Nam Honorary Science Award. I took, you know, every biology, ecology. And and I bet two you that year, wasn't even like working for you. No, two, it was like two fun. Years of physics. And, was this and, like fun for you? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, we used to joke around that physics is fun. Had a pen that had fun with. Okay, AP this is H1. where you and I depart our ways. But, I was a uh, soc in high school. It's like, why are we all here? We're not here to learn. Oh, We're here to be popular no, I, and to socialize. But it goes back to what you're talking about being a skeptic. But I did get A's, so. You know, I, I was the skeptic. <laughs> I had to have physical, hard, scientific fact or show me the math. And I walked out of that chapel that summer. Yeah, so you were the skeptic and, as well. And I was like, it just, my eyes were open, and I'm like, I am a sinner. And I'm not the good boy I thought I was, and I need Jesus. And, and it's easy for me to explain because it felt like I couldn't get a breath. I tried, and I couldn't get a breath. But after I accepted Christ, as I was laying there on my back, I was filled with so much warmth. It was like 50-some degrees outside, and I'm wearing a T-shirt and sweating. And I was filled with such warmth, and it was like all of a sudden... I was getting more oxygen in my lungs than I could possibly hold, and I wanted more. That's you know, what it felt like. You know what? Let me just interject for a second. That reminds me of, I did hospital ministry for 20 years, about 100 people a week, okay? And so even ministering to the nurses would come to me. And so when people did receive, because I did Holy Communion, I counseled them, I ministered before surgery, when they're dying at hospice time, you know, from A to Z, I'm doing all these things, teaching mm -hmm. the Bible. And so um, when they, when for those who did receive Christ with me, they would do the prayer, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior, and forgive me all of my sins. Mm -hmm. They would do that, and afterwards, I asked them, does your spiritual heart feel lighter? And they would all answer and say yes. That's because Jesus forgave all the debt, right? That exchange of life. When he was on the cross, he died in our place, right? Yeah. He gave us his good, and we he, he took on our bad, and he gave us his good. Yeah. I, I, I've been and so our heart life feels lighter. Romans 3.23 and 6.23, another one of my favorite verses, Isaiah 53, uh, 6. All we like sheep have gone astray, and... and and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Uh, another verse that many people are familiar with, you see it on the side of the road. I just saw a sign the other day, John 3.16. But there's more than just John 3.16. If you start back at the verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And another verse that reminds me of is Romans 5, 8, and 10. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. One of my favorite songs growing up over the years was... uh, it, it, some people know it by alas and did my savior bleed I know it is at the cross and that, that is uh, you talked about amazing grace this is my favorite song and alas and did my savior bleed and did my sovereign die would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I and of course we know he did he loves us so much at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it for sins that I had done he groaned upon that tree? Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. Uh, I think about that song often, and that's what was going through my mind as I lay there that night. And for the rest of my life, and you see, I'm fortunate I spent all of high school being mentored. I would go to, I went to a Bible study called Way Up. I had a, a guy who was two years older than me who was really big in the Navigators. And uh, he uh, discipled me, got me going on the topical memory system. Uh, I, I learned from very early on, and not just... And, and this is interesting, too. We'll, we'll get to that. But I learned very early on uh, the power of the Bible, the power of the Word, the power of Scripture. And we see in John that, you know, Jesus is the Word. But the Scripture, memorizing Scripture, and and even in the church I belong to, we have a thing called Awana, Approved Workmen Are Not Ashamed. And we would have the kids memorize scripture. Second Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the, tr- the word of truth. And I remember all those years I was in the army. When you're out in the field, yeah, I carried a little Bible with me. I kept it in my large Alice pack, my backpack. And the print was so small because it had the whole Bible, not just like the Gideon Bible. They almost need a magnifying glass. But it was the scripture that I had memorized over the years that gave me comfort. As I was walking around, witnessing to others, uh, sitting out there in the cold, uh, wondering why am I doing this? You know, is this for my country? What is it for? Is it for my God? What am I here? But the scripture, it it can be so much of a comfort to a, a person when they're struggling. You know what? But like I said, they, Jesus showed me heaven and hell, which I'll discuss a different time. I, I never even thought about, we all think about heaven, but it never really entered my mind that hell was real. Oh, boy. But it is. Hell. So, but the thing is, is that I believe that as you're saying, why am I doing this? Trying to, you know, talk to others about Jesus. Yeah. Ultimately, you know, Jesus died for all of us. And it's for us to receive the gift that's free. He gives us free will. Yeah. So you need to ask. But he, he not one does he want to perish, meaning no, go to hell. No, no, not one. He does not want one person to go there. That's why he died. Speaking of hell. You have a story that I've heard, and you, you asked me once uh, before, and, and I've never... I've never shared this story with you, and I think I've actually only shared it with uh, maybe a few other people. My mom, I told her about it one time. Uh, but you know that in the third grade, I was at a birthday party at a hotel in Albert Lee, and I I got pushed off the board into the pool. Who pushed you? I have I've no clue. One of the other kids. Just trying to be funny? Uh, yeah. And okay. I knew how to swim in the lake. I learned how to swim in Elberly Lake. How old were you then? Third grade. 
Okay. And, you know, basically dog paddle. That was it. Dog paddle. That's and, it? And well, I was better than that. But, you know, <laughs> when great. you're in a lake, that's quite the challenge. <laughs> I'm very the, competitive. If you but guys don't know that. In, and I went in head first. <laughs> He's not even laughing at my joke. <laughs> and I remember being at the bottom of the pool, looking up and seeing oh my gosh. the water up above the light dancing. Wait a minute. So they just threw you in and that was the end? Well, the only person there, you know, there's no life. Oh, because you can't dog paddle underneath. Yeah. You were thrown underneath. I get it. I'd never dove in before. Oh, this is not in. funny. So I got pushed in, you know, and I went in head first. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. And I see what happened. I, I can tell That's you right terrible. now, drowning does not hurt. What hurt was, uh, and I heard the so story. So you drowned. Later. Uh, yeah, I drowned. The mother saw me float to the surface, and, and I had really long, super blonde hair back then. What? She saw this <laughs> blonde, in third grade? blonde mop floating around on the top of the water. Oh, and my goodness. And she jumped in and pulled me out, gave me CPR, and I woke up laying on my back with my lungs on fire, coughing water. And that hurt. Uh, you you asked me once before if I had a near death experience. Okay, uh, so death didn't hurt. No, and that was third grade. Um, now you talk about hell, and this is this. You knew the story about the drowning, but you didn't know this one. I was saved in that summer after seventh grade. I was twelve. Shortly thereafter, just had my birthday actually. The next year, and. One has. To, I had learned about the principle of fleecing the Lord, and I was like, "Lord, if I'm really saved, and you got when you, you were testing God, when you what say were you those saying, words, like, give me the money tree." Oh, I wish. <laughs> when you say those words, you better be ready. What for were the you Lord saying? What, be, what did you say? Be ready for the Lord to act because well, you're you going to get what you asked for. And I said, "Lord, if I'm really saved, give me a vision of hell." What? And I woke up the crazy? next morning with the pillowcase halfway down my throat, and I was dreaming that I was drowning again. And I literally could not breathe until I pulled that pillowcase why did out you, of Why in the world would you ask for hell? Why wouldn't you ask for, like, the money tree? I don't know what I was thinking, but I can tell you what, that was not a good dream I was having. You know what? And the had truth I is, not woken up, I, I probably would have died that's right terrible. there in my I'm bed. I'm sorry that happened to you. You know what? I... You know, I can agree with that, though, that and through my known. walk with God, I, you know, I've seen heaven and hell. I've seen angels um, in my room physically and um, a couple other angel experiences. I've had probably three that I'm aware of, no, probably more than that. But anyway, um, so um, I recall when I would hike, I would be hiking and I would be friends with the rangers and I was talking to a ranger one morning and I said, well, what kind of animals are around here? And they said, oh, you know, bears and this and um, bobcat and I'm like, a bobcat? Oh, I would love to see a bobcat. How beautiful that must be. Like he went to the mountain lion, all these kind of animals, and but the bobcat. I am not lying here. The next morning, I'm jogging on the trail at Towsley in Santa Clarita, California. And so there's like a T in the two trails hitting, merging, like a T. He's at the top of the T, a bobcat, and I'm at the bottom of the T, and they merge. We run. He's running. I'm running. No kidding. We run. We're a foot apart when we merge and he was beautiful he was beautiful but you got to be careful for what you ask for yeah i was just saying the day before to the ranger oh, i would love to see a bobcat well there you go <laughs> yeah. you really in so many other instances instances that i could think of that truly those things came to pass because i was like oh i would love that yeah I'd, I'd completely forget about I was uh, at Fort Hood, and it, of course, when it rains down there, the ground is caliche, so it's almost like concrete. So when it rains, the water pools on it, and it starts to run, and we get flash floods, and it's pouring out. And 
I, I called in and they canceled PT, you know, physical training. So they said, do show up for work at 8. So I head down the, uh, towards, towards work and I have to go through this low water crossing by a park. And I get there and there's a, a fireman there, a fire truck, and they're directing traffic. The water's only about six inches deep at the time. I'm sitting there waiting my turn, and I don't know why, but I, I said, you know, God, Lord, I've never actually seen lightning strike anything because it was a pretty good thunderstorm that we were sitting in. And it was just, like I said, just pouring. I no sooner got those words out of my mouth, and up to my left, maybe, you know, straight over is a telephone pole with a transformer on it, probably about 20 yards away, and the lightning strikes it, and my ears pop, and sparks are flying everywhere, and the thing catches fire, and it's smoking, and I'm like, okay, thank you, Jesus. Okay. I'll never ask for that again. <laughs> okay, so we need to get really smart about this. If things happen according to when we ask like that, I mean, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. Yeah. So we got to be careful what we're asking for, and we better start asking for that money tree. <laughs> yeah. Stop asking for, you know, the well, bobcat to show up. Well, we've seen that. Because <laughs> that was scary, guys. We, I cried. I ran. Seen, I did everything I wasn't supposed to do. We have seen that everything. since we got married. We asked the Lord to bless us with abundance. Oh, yeah. And, and we keep getting these little surprises, financial yeah, we're, surprises yeah, here we're, and yeah. there. It's, I, we could go on and on about yeah, that. Yeah, guys, I have so many clothes and shoes that Khloe Kardashian would be going, hmm. Yeah, she needs counseling. <laughs> yeah, I probably need a counselor. Just kidding. I don't need counseling. We it's all good. Closet the size of a garage. but I need no. Chloe's closet. <laughs> Chloe Kardashian's closet. Anyway. She's got a good one. But, you know, I just um, want to say let's that. Let's get back on topic here. I just, I just want to say that, you know, I've been in ministry. I don't even know how many years I'd have to really think about it. But it's been maybe close to 30. I don't know. I'd have to look. Um, so over 20, we'll say. And I did a lot of hospital ministry, like I said, 20 years, about 100 people a week. I did it weekly. And, uh, you know, ER, ICU, convalescent, regular beds in the hospital to, you know, mental ward a couple times. And so I remember running from one hospital to the other. And, you know, I'm just pretty much down to earth because, you know, I would show up in sweats, like in their designer ones, like Victoria's Secret. They're not cheap and they're not holy. I don't have holes. I'm not dressed inappropriately. You can't see cleavage or anything like that. Just dress casual. And they're, like I said, they're not cheap clothes. But I remember, you know, the security guards know me at the hospital. They would say, hey, Rev Kimmy, you know, everyone knew me. But if they got someone new at the reception desk at the hospital, I'd walk up, check in, get my security badge, blah, 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 right, to cruise around to ICU or wherever. And this one girl, I couldn't believe she said it. She goes, you don't, she was new. She goes, you don't look like a reverend. I'm like, <laughs> I can't believe she actually said that. It's like, was that your thought? <laughs> but, um, you know, I just want to say, guys, that being a Christian is not about wearing a suit and wearing our, pearl, our pearls. Um, it's about being real and truly loving people and caring. And we should help whenever we're, we're able to help. And I try to do that. I'm trained as a minister. I've been asked to do memorials in hospitals from the psychologists. And so the person who trains me, my pastor, I said, should I do this? He goes, Kim, you are to do it. If you're asked to do something and you're able to do it, you need to go do it. So that's how I'm trained. So if I'm asked to help on a certain missing person case and I'm able to help, I go. You know, memorial services, what what have you. So anyway, with regards to us dressing casual, these apostles were dressed casual. Okay, the real Christians, these apostles like Peter, Paul, or not Paul did not walk with them, but Peter and John and a few others, right, were not wearing suits. Yeah. Did they go to theology school? No. Okay, they don't have degrees. They're learning from, the Bible says that you'll be taught from the Holy Spirit. 
I've been taught a lot from the Holy Spirit. Okay, and I just want to read in the Bible. These people, the the ones who walked with Christ, the apostles, that did not wear suits. Um, it's said about them. To this very hour, we go hungry, and thirsty. We are in rags. We are brutally treated. We are homeless. When we are slandered, we ask kindly. Up to this moment. We have become the scum of the earth. This is in 1 Corinthians 4.13. These are the people whose names, they're so holy. Their names are written around the new wall in New Jerusalem. Our names are not written there. You know, these are people we need to be feeding. People who need help or clothe people. Do something to help. Jesus talked to me about waking up the sleepers. That means everyone who's a Christian, you know, there's a joke out there about Christians, for about us, who just sit in the pew. They go to church. They sit in the pew. They get their coffee. They get their muffin. They're called the chosen, the, the frozen, chosen. frozen chosen. What does that mean? That means you're frozen in your pew. You're not doing anything. Jesus has spoken to me and he has asked me, in fact, two years ago in 2020, he asked me to go wake up the sleepers. I didn't do it right away because I wasn't quite certain. What do you mean? You know, I'm going to keep it real here. Like, what exactly do you want? He wants people to wake up. Those are his and go do what you know you're supposed to be doing. And if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, contact me. That's what my gifts are for. The prophetic because God will reveal it to me and I'll tell you what you're supposed to be doing. You don't know your gifts or your calling? Contact me. Let's use my gifts, the prophetic. Get your rolling in that direction. This is what he specifically said I need to be doing to help others. If you're interested, if you need me, contact me through Facebook, Instant Messenger. I'll be happy to. Yeah, the Bible says that uh, God would rather have you cold than lukewarm. Have you hot or cold, not lukewarm, uh, you think about your food. Uh, it's either cold ice cream and it's good, or it's hot steak and it's good, but you get that coffee that's been sitting there for hours and it's kind of room temperature, it's like nasty, you just want to get rid of it. Well, you know, Je Jesus says that you will know my people for their love for one another. Yeah. So if people are not loving us, then you need to wonder. Yeah, the, but what, also he says that love will run cold, so we need to also check out our temperature. Are we bitter, or are we going to become better? Yeah. So then, your bitterness is the condition of your heart, your spiritual heart, where you love people. You need to take some time to pluck the weeds, so to speak, in your heart. Treat it like a garden, there or like a plumbing. The lo the Holy Spirit, that love that filled me, is not able to flow, guys, if you have unforgiveness in there towards people or whatever it is. You need to take some time to pray and just be quiet and wait for his answer. God answers, guys. You know, we, we pray and then we move on. But you got to be quiet, take a moment, pray, and listen. Take some quiet time. Listen. And so you need to pluck, clean your garden, your spiritual heart, and pull those weeds out so love can flow in there. It's very scary when Jesus says that love is going to run cold. Do you know that God is love? And if your connection to love is dying away, do you know that your connection to God is dying away? So you need to make sure to stay in your love space, loving people, loving yourself. And if you're able to help someone, help. You know, like I help on cases because these people ask. And that's what God says too. He says, you have not because you've asked not. So yeah. be sure to ask guys for that money tree. Just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Ask for it. <laughs> Whatever it is you need, ask. And people, when I would minister to them, they would say, but I feel guilty asking for myself. I'm like, but that's, that's why you don't have. 
Yeah. It's okay. None of us are deserving of, of heaven or forgiveness of sins or Jesus' gift. But we need to be asking for what we need. You know? He yeah, wants your, to give us. Your stories are uh, about the apostles and, and about loving others reminds me of an experience that I had. And that was years ago, back when I was in college. And a couple friends of mine came over to the school. We went out to church. This is back in the 70s when everybody wore, you know, big bell-bottom jeans and pants with the longer hair and everything. And and this individual uh, from the school walked up to these two people, looked at them and said, are you saved? And of course I knew they were. And they they nodded in the affirmative and, and then immediately he judged them. And he said, well, you need to get your hair cut and, and get your heart right with God. And I'm thinking, boy, I'll, I'll bet you the apostles had long hair and beards. <laughs> Did Jesus? And, and immediately, I mean, <laughs> that's not loving others, and that's being judgmental. And like you said, well, we, we should make sure our, the weeds are out of our own yard first. Well, the thing is, is we need to be focused on our character. Jesus says that man, human beings, judge individuals by the outward appearance. Yeah. God judges from the inner, the yeah. heart, yeah. the spiritual heart which is our character and loving people is the most important thing, loving God and loving others. And a part of loving others, if we're to love others, you really can't do that unless you're loving yourself. Have you noticed that? We treat others the way we want to be treated, usually. Yeah. So I think it's very important that, you know, the Bible, if anybody is searching for God like I was, save yourself a bundle of time. I had a quest. I don't know how many years. Six? Don't know. It was fun, but I got tangled up in a lot of darkness. I was attacked, spiritually attacked. I've had experiences I'll talk about in my Quest for God book. Not going to say it here. I've had angelic appearances physically in my room and I was living alone, okay, at night. Doors locked, nobody has keys. All right? So we'll talk about it another time. But for now, you know, I want to encourage you guys, if you want to know God or you want some fun experiences, go get a Bible. And some people, you know, God doesn't have to be boring. You know, oh, we have to, you know, not cuss. And we don't have to do this and that and all these rules. But the truth is, is that Jesus sets us free. We're free and not tangled up in debts and sins. We're actually free in him. He's not, he doesn't, you know, control you and manipulate you. And now it's prison time. No, it's actually vice versa. You're free in Christ. And I just want to say that with this investigation I've done with God, some people take the time to go study the waters. And what is that called when you're out in the ocean and you're studying the oceanography, the, um, yeah, oceanography. And when you're studying the stars, what is that called? Astronomy. Right. Yeah. And then what else? So there's what else do we study, guys? We can study flowers. We can study bees. We can study people study birds. They go hiking. They get the binoculars. But Okay, and all this is fine. And some people collect cars, and they think that's really killer and cool. And But, you know, I like astronomy. I do like it. But you know one that's more mysterious, guys? The most popular person I've ever met and do an investigation from police chiefs when they write me in emails, they'll say, in his service, comma, chief so-and-so. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's right. That is awesome. She means serving God. Yeah. It is a ministry. God puts everyone in their authority. From I did some other investigations, medical doctors and surgeons rely on God. They talk about God, right? Our um, inauguration speeches, go look them up, guys, online. They talk about God. If you pull out a dollar bill, what do you find written on it? In God we trust. Let me tell you, who is the number one author? It's the Holy Bible. 
God wrote that. It's yeah. God inspired and God breathed. God is the best author. He's the most popular person who's mentioned in most movies or books and from time to time. It's Jesus. Yeah. He is the most popular person I've known and quite frankly is really hard to, to hunt. He's <laughs> to stalk. Because I stalk him. Some people may do um, the um, study of the stars and or the planets or the ocean and they go scuba diving or whatever it may be. But I study God. That is my hobby. And he's very mysterious. He creates miracles that I have witnessed that some of us can find on the other episodes on these cases. It's God. It's not me. It's not anyone but God. And it is real, and we're all witnessing it, that miracles can still happen today. Jesus is still the same person. We'll do an episode on miracles that we both experienced. Oh, yeah, and I'll talk about these other, you know, situations I've had that are miracles in my personal life. And if you folks are going to go out and get a Bible, uh, much like Kim was talking about at the beginning, uh, don't start on the left, at the front, with the book of Genesis. Uh, I, you know, like you were talking about, you started there. I, growing up in the church, I I started with the New Testament. And it wasn't until, like, eighth grade. That's because you had teachers. I didn't. About eighth grade, I was was in a Bible study, and they encouraged us to read the whole Bible. And I'm like, you know, I've never read the whole Bible. So I actually went back, and I started with the book of Genesis. And boy, you talk about, you weren't kidding. Boring, boring, boring. All these wars God and kings is not and boring, judges people. and genealogies. Investigate and, him. Well, I'm talking about the first time I read it. I'm like, oh He's my goodness. He's not boring. He's the most mysterious, so I could not wait profound to get past person that. And, and thing and, to and study. And then I got to, Psalms was okay, Proverbs, but I really liked the prophets, Ezekiel, Daniel, Isaiah. But uh, if you're going to get a Bible and you want to find God, go to John. The book of John, start at the beginning. It's called the book of love, but it's it, it will tell you who Jesus is, who God is, and why Jesus came to earth. And that's where you'll find salvation. After John, go to the book of Romans. Um Later on, you can go back and read the Old Testament. And if a spirit comes on you that's very loving and it's an impression coming upon you of convicting you of sin and truth, know that's the Holy Spirit and just believe him and follow his guidance. Um, I just want to close with what I opened with, but I'm going to read a little more. Okay. And I got a little teary at the beginning of this podcast because truly guys if you can hear my stumbling around right looking for god pulling up this rug i god are you under there no he's not there look under that couch yeah he's not over there with this group guru or this psychic or i didn't know to go to a christian church i'm a jew why would i go to a christian church jesus who's jesus Well, he's the Messiah to the Jew and to the Gentile, to everyone. So I just want to close with these words again of amazing grace. And and that was written by John Newton, captain of a slave ship. Yeah, he he shipped people against their will, slaves. Yeah. Yeah, and then later on he found, people can Google John Newton, and he felt so repentant and so awful. You know, I didn't have slaves, but I was lost looking for God in all the wrong places. And I would imagine God, Jesus, was, or was like, ay, 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 ay. <laughs> there she goes again. Oh, in utter darkness. Oy Just a vey. poor girl. Yeah, yeah. he's Jewish. So, I, yeah, <laughs> Nishkit, which means Yiddish for not good. <laughs> but so let's let's close with the reading of Amazing Grace again and let's really reflect on these words and how yeah this does match Kim's life. Though I you know I, I, I didn't have slaves, but I was still really blind and lost. So it does make me emotional because truly not only 
did I have all these great possessions as a 20-year-old? They weren't my diamonds. And I want to say that Jesus is my treasure. He is my most precious um, possession that I have today. I can lose everything, but nobody can take away my Jesus who dwells within my heart. And he says that too, I cannot be stolen from him. So that's the love I was looking for, guys. And I hope that you too, if you have emptiness, that you too find God who is love and that you have a relationship, a personal relationship with him to where you're not just having to put on a suit. Let's go to church. It's Sunday. It's Easter. Okay, let's put on the pearls and, <laughs> and let's smile at everyone. Hi, I'm fine. No problems. That's not true. Let's keep it real. Let's wear sweats. Just put your hair up and you don't have to wear your makeup. And it's about the heart. And it's about really having a relationship with God and loving and caring about other people. Yeah. So let's close with this word. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I'm going to skip down to the last paragraph here. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, his mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. You know, it says that when Jesus returns, which I believe we are in the end days, the latter days, if he's talking about me waking up the sleepers, he talks about that the end times will be like the days of Noah. Do you know that Noah's boat was to save people from the flood? Do you know that the, the boat today is Jesus? Receiving Jesus, guys, is the nowadays boat yep. for Noah to be saved. So if anybody wants to save years of searching for God and filling your void. Let me just say how to do it. Because if only someone told me, I would have done it. Just say, okay, acknowledge you're a sinner. You've lied once, right? That's good enough. So you're a sinner. That means you're separate from God. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior and forgive me all of my sins. And when I die, give me the gift of eternal life. In heaven with you, Jesus, forever. I, You know, it's it's a gift. It's a gift at, at times, like at Christmas or your birthday. If I give you a gift, did you earn that? No, you just receive it. That's a gift. And you need to receive that because God gives free will. So if you've done that, congratulations. Do you know the Bible says that angels around the throne of God actually praise Jesus? It is a huge huge ordeal so if you've done that congratulations you're now born again and i want you guys to go out and get a bible or just google it online and if you don't understand the bible it's okay because neither did i that day lying in bed did i in fact i was rolling my eyes how stupid is this adam and eve yeah, yeah. so and i grew up understanding the bible I grew up hearing about Jesus and what he'd done for me. And I thought I was a good boy. But it was that one day when the Holy Spirit convicted me of my sin. And I said, you know what? I can't do this on my own. And that's what it took. Just what you said, Kim. I asked the Lord to do it for me. I accepted what Jesus had done for me. Nothing I could do except accept that gift. That's all you can do. And if you've done that today, please reach out to us. I do want to leave with, we've talked about heavy things. I'm going to leave. In ministry, I use humor because I had people dying. People were depressed. They were paralyzed. They've been abandoned by family members. I was their family. I adopted a lot of people, so to speak, not really legally. So let me leave you with a joke and that I made up. Okay. <laughs> okay, like I was saying, Adam and Eve, right? Why did God make man before the woman? Oh, 
I don't know. Why did God make man first? Because with every masterpiece, you must start with a rough draft. <laughs> In other words, the guy's the rough draft, and us women are the final, beautiful masterpiece that doesn't need to be tweaked like, <laughs> like the guy was. Is that not funny, Dr. G? Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Why aren't you laughing? <laughs> I wrote it. Better I don't think it's out there, another. but I told it a lot in ministry. And the girls loved it. The guys were like, hmm. It reminds me of another topic <laughs> we can talk about and how uh, Eve, woman, was a part of God's plan from the get-go. Of course. And and <laughs> Jesus' mother Mary and so forth. And But anyway, we should wrap it up there. Yes. And like I said, feel free to reach out to us via Facebook Messenger. And uh, we have a bunch of videos up. And a bunch of other stories. You have no idea the things three, that we have to three, tell. Three other episodes that are up. Other cases, yep. missing person cases are coming up, guys. Other miracles. Yeah. That, that God performed, and I believe that he performs these miracles as he did way back when, when he was walking. He performed miracles to draw others to him and to believe in him. Yeah, he is should. performing miracles, signs and wonders, these on these missing person miracles. cases. He really is, and um, it is to, for people to go, whoa, <laughs> and to believe in him and to be drawn to him. Okay, so we do have so many other of those true stories that we'll share another time, other personal stories, angels saving me from an accident, car accident that I was in all by myself. It was a miracle, horse accident, and so many other things that God clearly saved me. Miracles happened. So anyway, thank you so much for tuning in, and we will talk to you guys in another episode. God bless you. Bye-bye.